Teaching to me is not a job, really. I think teaching is, is life skills. We teach life, we're not, not only teaching knowledge. So I'm going to show you some language math. 10 plus 10 equals 20. 10 plus 10 is 20. And 11 plus 11, 22. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's language for you in math. Teaching is part of my life. So last week's class, we were doing a lot of presentations. So now I'm going to ask you to come and tell us parts of your homework. I'm going to give some of you opportunity to do this and show the class. The plastic does not break down and digest it by the environment. Algorithm is a mirror that reflects many of the biases inherent in human society. I teach different study groups like program studies for international organizations, One Belt, One Road, FOCAC, and a lot of things on global competency. So let's talk about the history and the, what happened in Africa, right? At the moment, what's happening is China's involvement in Africa makes a lot of positive changes. So how do you think about the future? Yeah, I think the future is promising because with the help of China, like in infrastructure, cooperation, and education, and many other fields. And this is actually happening in many different countries with the help of um, the Belt and Road Initiative. Yeah, so the 54 different countries in Africa might find a good partner in long term to be with, with yes. China. I do program studies, different cases for organizations, international, do things on the Belt and Road, FOCAC, more about uh, the SDGs, all the things that United Nations do. So this is the main port, railway port, connecting Europe with China. And the reason I'm here today is because I love to go around Chengdu and find out more. I came to this place to see the 10 years of the One Belt, One Road and how it's connecting Europe with all these exhibition pavilions all the different countries, but also to tell my students in the program studies in university more about these international trade organizations. So this is the French pavilion and I'm interested to see what's happening inside here. Lots of wines. This is part of the BRI in a big way, one of the main products, import, export and trade between Europe and China whether it's Italy or France or, and like this, Portugal, will be red wine production. And then Portugal Pavilion. See how good this would be with freaking red meat. It's red wine going with meat dishes. Really nice. And I love chocolates. This looks good. Maybe I would start eating from one side to the other. <laughs> So let me see which one. Dark chocolate. I need to take a present because my wife loves me. I'm going to fly back to South Africa soon and go on my summer vacation. It will be winter vacation in China, but to me it will be summer vacation. And then I will take some of these chocolates to give to my wife maybe. Thank you. Thank you. So this is a nice map. See all the maritime routes and the overland routes of the BRI going all the way into Europe. 
and you can see all the connections and the expansion of the last 10 years. So looking at all of this and then getting to this continent made me think about the reason why I came to China in the beginning all those years ago and it was in 1992 when I drove along the highway almost midnight in South Africa and I found an old man next to the highway and this old man was lost and then went back and tried to speak to him and he was Chinese and I'm English so we couldn't understand each other but I explained to him to get into the car because he cannot stand next to the highway and then take him to my house next day and the day after we got him back to his daughter and to them it was like uh, a life saved and I never saw him again because he flew back to China but in 1996 which is four years later I received a phone call and uh, the phone call said there's a Chinese delegation that wants to come to South Africa to sign some agreements. They want to do tourism and trade and visit. And the old man said, call this guy. So they called me. And I had this whole delegation going around South Africa and signing agreements, relationships being built. And I thought that was that. But a year later, in 1997, I received another call from a mayor. Mayor Jia in Junhua province, Hebei. And he asked me to bring all those people to China. So in 1997, that was my first visit coming to Beijing, visiting China and starting a relationship. All of this One Belt, One Road started and the brick started and everything else. And everybody would think, why do you think you can connect Africa and China? And I'm not. That was because of the old man. That name at Africa-China Link is in respect to him. Thank you. I think about all those things. Just one small event that you link to somebody and that that some person changes your whole life change your career so i'm honored to have this because of the old man so education and teaching people and having relationships between different countries gives us a deeper understanding more wisdom in bringing the world together the future how can we build this positive relationship between different people? Because China becomes a global player now. So we want you to focus on those two chapters. When we teach people and we have classes and we do things, we need to teach relationships. We need to teach life skills, not only knowledge. Because knowledge alone doesn't move the world. Relationships and cooperation and being together changes the world.